Folks, by now I'm sure many of you have heard about the passing of game legend and pioneer James M. Ward. Um, James passed away uh, this past evening. Um, we heard about it on the live stream last night. Um, and what can I say other than it is it is a, a real tragedy. Uh, if you're into classic Dungeons and Dragons, well, really Dungeons and Dragons from from every era in the 70s, 80s, and and even the 90s, odds are you have read some of Jim's work. Um, early on, Jim was the fifth employee ever at TSR. Jim met Gary in a bookstore when they found out that they were buying exactly the same fantasy and science fiction novels. They had a, a shared love of the same things. So, of course, it was a natural fit. Uh, Jim's early contributions included uh, work on Supplement 1, Greyhawk, some contributions there. Um, and a story he tells uh, is sort of immortalized in Supplement 1, Greyhawk, uh, about a Meteor Swarm, the spell. Um, and Jim has regaled us with that uh, in an interview, which I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, Jim created the first ever science fiction role-playing game with the Metamorphosis Alpha about uh, a crew of, of primitive folks stranded in a generation starship as it drifted aimlessly in, out in the universe. Jim, of course, later went on to create Gamma World about a uh, post-apocalypse, nuclear, biological, and chemical ravaged Earth and adventurers' attempts to survive uh, in the ruins and and avoid death at the hands of radiation and mutations and everything else, something that he would gleefully inflict on his players. Uh... Jim, of course, was a long, long time employee at TSR. He worked on Gods, Demigods, and Heroes, which was the first ever uh, catalog of gods for a role playing game. And then later, he worked on Deities and Demigods, sort of the sequel for it for first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And that of course is a highly, highly sought after work, whether it is the unexpurgated version or the one that uh, had the HP Lovecraft and Michael Moorcock sections removed, despite Jim getting assurances from Chaosium that they could stay. Uh, Jim, Again, he, he stayed on at TSR after Gary left, and he he worked on many, many products, including the transitional Greyhawk Adventures, which bridged 1st edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons and 2nd edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Um, he worked on uh, this. He, he, did the, he did a little bit of fiction. This is a sort of choose-your-own-adventure for two players, this is called Dragon Sword of Lankmar, and it's, a, of course, it's set in the uh, Fofford and Grey Mouser setting. Um, he wrote works of fiction. The novelization for Pool of Radiance, that classic computer game, um, its sequel, Pools of Darkness, and the final one, uh, Pools of Twilight. Um... He worked on uh, the game The Mansion of Mad Professor Ludlow. Um, he continued throughout his life working on tabletop RPGs and and associated games. He uh, he he worked he was working for Troll Lord Games back in the early two thousands. Uh, he he was a designer. He was a creator. Jim made so much wonderful stuff. Um, speaking personally, speaking from the heart, Jim was always very kind to me. He was he was of a very quick wit, and 
during the the few times that I got to see and meet Jim, uh, he he was always always exceptionally nice. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to get it, to get his autograph on a couple of things, uh, which which I will cherish. He he talks a lot in interviews about working with TSR after Gary and trying to trying to to save the design team under him which he he didn't want to be responsible for people he he just he just wanted to do his own fun things but but he was forced into a managerial position and Jim uh he he fought for the people he worked with um and his his duels with Lorraine were were rather infamous uh indeed he once went and played a little card game from a game design company in Seattle and thought it was going to be the next big thing and insisted to Lorraine Williams that they, that they buy this company that was calling itself Wizards of the Coast to acquire this game, Magic the Gathering. And, of course, she didn't want to spend the money and so gaming history ended up very, very, very differently. Um, again, my own reflections, I can't say enough good about Jim. He was, uh, a really, really good guy. Um, I first met him at the Lake Geneva Gaming Convention in 2006 and, uh, or perhaps it was 2007, but I had a lot of fun. Uh, playing Dragon Lairds with Jim. Uh, he's He was one of the earliest guests on the show. And just in the space of two years, he guested four times, four times right here on the live stream. And I will, I will post links to all of those at the time of this video. I only have two of those videos uploaded. I will upload the rest of them after this video goes out and uh, amend the links below so you folks can watch and listen to those interviews. I would love to hear from anyone who got to meet Jim, who got to, who got to game with Jim more than the occasional card game. Uh, what, what are your fond memories of, of Jim? Um, did you meet him at a Gen Con? Did he irradiate, mutate, and mutilate your characters in a game? of Metamorphosis Alpha or Gamma World, uh, let me know in the comments below, folks. And uh, I know it's hard to say, hey, if you like this video, because this is certainly not something we like, but if you found this informative, if you, if you found revisiting the good times with Jim to be um, comforting, then if you feel so inclined, please do give it a thumbs up and I try to bring people news that that impact us here in the old school community. So if you like hearing that, uh, and again, if you're so inclined, click the, the subscription button and the bell icon for notifications. Um, and just uh, the last thing I would say in closing, uh, thank you very much to Gene and Ward to Breck, James, and Theon Ward, thank you for sharing Jim with us. Um, and I will, uh, I will see you all in the next video.